Relays and contactors are used to switch larger loads than you can typically do with a pilot device or a PLC output. Today we're going to learn about relays and contactors and that most often overlooked and important overload or manual motor starter. Hi, this is Tim. I help you become a better technician so that you will always be in demand. Let's start with a basic relay. Most of your relays come in two pieces. You have a socket and then the relay. And if we look at a diagram of it, we see that there is a coil of wire here. And so if you will energize terminals 13 and 14, you'll create a magnetic field and that's gonna shift these contacts right here. If I take 24 volt to terminal 13 and 14, then you can see the contacts in its shift along with the LED indicator for that coil. And a contactor is gonna function exactly the same way. Usually you're gonna have a, some smaller terminals on it, and that's your coil, and you'll have the larger ones here. And that's what's gonna switch the actual load. If I touch 24 volt to this one, the same deal. You can see the contact moving up and down. And so in here, there's those same metal contacts that are switching that'll switch your load on and off. On the side of relays and contactors, you're gonna see a chart like this. And it's going to tell you what horsepower at either single or three phase that you can run and at what voltage. So at 220, this is good for 30 horsepower. And at 480, this is good for 50 horsepower. That 50 horsepower does not correlate to the amps of this contactor here. This is an 80 amp contact. And if we'll look at a full load amp chart, then 80 amps you think would get to 60 horsepower, but it won't. The horsepower rating on the side of the contactor, that's what you need to go by when you're connecting a motor to it, not the amperage rating. You'll also find these horsepower ratings on a lot of relays. A lot of people will tell you that a contactor is meant for motors and a relay is not. But in this case, this relay is good for a half horsepower motor at 120 volt or a one horsepower motor at 277 volt. So relays sometimes do have motor ratings also. Now, when you're starting out, you're going to be like, okay, I need to switch this 50 horsepower motor and you're just going to buy a contactor. And that works great until something goes wrong. So along with every contactor, you should have some type of motor protection. And this manual motor starter here, which includes your overload and circuit protection built in. And these will be in a form factor like this. Or you need a combination of a circuit breaker contactor and then this overload and so in this case this overload is designed to connect right on the bottom of this one and then you would tighten these lugs and your motors go here now an important difference between a manual motor starter and an overload is a manual motor starter actually breaks the load so if i take a voltmeter and connect it across the contacts when we're on current will flow through for good but when this trips it does break the physical contacts. Whereas on this overload, currently I have it tripped and it still has continuity. So an overload only switches these auxiliaries. So this auxiliary has to wire through the coil of the contactor such as we have done here in order for it to break the circuit. Which brings us to the next very important thing that people mess up on all the time is understanding what is the normal position of an overload. Now the normal position is when nothing's wrong. A normally closed contact will allow current to flow when the overload is not tripped. And the normally open will only allow current to flow when the overload is tripped. But either during shipping or by somebody being curious and hitting the trip button, they will trip these overloads. And then when you go to wire it up, it won't work. So when you take your own meter here, we're getting the beep, which means we have continuity. So they had them over here on the normally closed, and they're like, well, my motor won't start. So they get confused about what the normal position is, and they move them over to the normally open contact. By that point, you actually have no overload protection on your motor. And I've seen this before on a very big system with a whole row of motor starters, and they called me in because they burned up a motor and the overload never tripped. And I walked in there, and right away I saw it. I'm like, that thing's wired on the normally open. And I looked through and every single motor in there was on the normally open contact. So if you have it wired right, when you switch your contactor, it will come on. And usually there'll be a test button. In this case, this one's a momentary test button. 
but when you hit the test button, you should hear it drop out. On the topic of motors, motor poles versus RPM is a question I get a lot. So click here so we can understand how motor poles affect the RPM.